Now, should we start with the game? I will ask the scenarios and you will tell the diagnosis. Good idea. Okay. Parents come to you. Uh, they bring a five-year-old child. And they say that uh, this child does not sit in the class. And uh, child is very active, hyperactive or something. And the child is hyperactive in everything. Child is very talkative. There is a half question asked in the class. The child answers it first. And uh, child is very playful, very high energetic. So what is your diagnosis? The age of the child is five years. Okay, those who are written ADSD, they need their treatment actually for ADSD. Giving rapid answer is also ADSD actually. And those who are written mania, oh my God, what to do? Yeah, so Sujitra is saying, what is a complaint? Looks like a normal child. Okay, that's good answer actually. Child is a child. Child is five years. Absolutely okay. So think first common things. It can be a normal behavior. It can be active kid. Very good. It can be a child is a child. There is no problem. It's absolutely okay. Child is more energetic. <laughs> it's good. So utilize this energy for studies. Utilize this energy for sports. Utilize this energy for creativity. Don't label the child <laughs> ADSD. Just because you are saying the child is hyperactive. You saw, heard that word hyperactive and suddenly ADSD. You know the problem with this label is that that is label is going to stay for lifetime. And parents are going to behave that this is a special child outcast. And the child will think that okay, whatever I do stupid things, it is accepted because I have ADSD. The child will beat other children. The child will bully other children. Child will break the toys, child will behave abnormally and will blame it on ADSD. So you are giving escape mechanism. Don't do that. Okay. All those people, those who wrote ADSD before the completion of question, actually your diagnosis is ADSD in adults. So you should read the chapter in the book ADSD in adults and you should do your treatment as per that. Okay. Don't worry. But don't take medicines. Okay. And don't write on your head you are ADSD. You write that you are ADSD. I will give you another case. There are two children. They come to you. You are a school teacher or you are a counselor, school counselor. You visit a school and you are talking to a group of children. There is a one uh, boy who is like moving like me, you know, moving and animated, talking, moving and doing things, right? And rocking the chair, not sitting quietly. Both are now seven to eight years, second standard, third standard. And uh, you see one girl who is sitting quietly. Okay. Now you take the interview. You ask, hey, how many of you like playing? So everyone says, yeah, I like playing. So then you ask, how many of you like studying? Some people raise the hand. So this boy is not raising the hand, but the girl is raising the hand who seems to be reserved. Then you say, how many of you do not have friends? So the girl raises the hand. She does not have friend. How many of you have frequent fights, frequent quarrels during play? No one raises the hand because the girl doesn't want. So teacher says, yeah, actually it happens with her. Then you ask, um, <clears throat> how is your study? The girl says it's okay. The study is affected. And the boy says, my study is good. The boy is outwardly hyperactive, rocking in the chair not sitting quietly, talking very, very. The girl is reserved and the girl has low scoring and girl has fights during plays. The girl doesn't have friends. Who has ADSD? 
एंड हु हैज ऑटिज्म गुड आई लाइक साक्षी हाउ यू थिंक वेरी गुड I like Kankana. Both are different in nature. Very good. Jay is like girl has autism. Okay. Only this much only you diagnose autism. Wow. I if I would have said who has schizophrenia, then you would have said at least one person should have schizophrenia. Uh, right. So then you say the teacher has schizophrenia. Right. Someone must have. The boy is boy, energetic boy. Has friends. Playing without quarrel or minimum quarrels, acceptable quarrels, is good in scoring. The boy is hyperactive. Doesn't mean ADHD. The girl outwardly she is reserved. There are two three pinpoints. One is she does fights frequently more than others. <coughs> she is not able to make friends. Now that doesn't make autism. That is not a diagnosis of autism. You have to find more things. in autism <clears throat> there is going to be some developmental delay there is going to be some social behavioral problem some social engagement problem then you call it autism if somebody is not meeting matching the eyes someone doesn't reflect takes time for talking there are many things you are going to do autism is a very serious label if you label a child very easily like autism that is a crime don't do that because it stays for lifetime it's very difficult to call it adhd if you ask this girl more questions right if you find talk to the parents of the girl probably you will find that this girl changes the toys frequently this girl changes the games frequently playing one thing then jumps to other doing some craft activity jumps to other studying one subject jumps to other so there is a good likelihood that this girl may have adhd i like the way kankana and other people one more you have said uh, shreya or shruti that the girl may be bullied also there may be something wrong also right good possibility good you are thinking from a holistic approach don't come to the diagnosis always come to differential diagnosis just second so the differential diagnosis can be one diagnosis second diagnosis it can be this it can be a normal child it can be bullied child at school it can be oppressed child at home it can be some other problem it can be some worm infestation it can be child with a low mood it can be early puberty any of these things it can be child with less confidence because of parents or other reason it can be adhd it can be autism but for autism you need to do something more to identify that so don't label the child very easily and it can be completely normal introvert shy girl right poor in studies correct arpita very good very good uma has given a very good example and very in depth insight so girl craves attention but she is afraid of socializing so she, to satisfy her attention she fights with others itself a possibility correct anything can be there so have always a holistic approach don't go for diagnosis never label a child autism sometimes you will find that a mother will come and she will say you know my child has been diagnosed adhd depression and this this is anxiety okay <laughs> probably someone who diagnosed needs a treatment or the mother needs the treatment so mother has gone to the google and diagnosed the child that this is a problem so mother is attention seeking it happens so be careful with that correct there may be nature only
Now for autism, if you read the chapter on autism, so there is a statement, a kid who can float, don't teach this kid how to run, teach this kid how to fly. So the concept I will tell you. So you have seen yourself as a child, you have seen other children that everyone first starts crawling, then they walk and then they run. Sometimes you have the same expectation from autism and ADHD child. This autism and ADHD child, they do not know how to walk. They know how to float. So you test them, teach them how to fly. Don't tell them how to run because the game is different for them. They have a different skill set. Someone who is autistic may be good in some other skill. So you identify what is the skill set of your child and help that child grow in that skill. It's not necessary that you need to have a good IQ or high IQ. Sometimes more efforts, discipline is also important or it is sufficient to score good marks in your entrance and get good uh, seat. Sometimes an autistic child will have other potential. So you need to identify that and help that kid. So autistic child knows how to float. Teach them how to fly. Now their float, this skill, what is that skill you need to identify? Yeah. So don't expect your child, if someone is autistic, don't expect them to run. Now, when you want to diagnose someone with autism, you need to take care of three developmental factors. So one is psychological growth, second is neurological growth, and third is physical growth. In autism, this is for all children. In autism, you take for social interaction. Okay. So if you talk to the child, whether the child is responding back, whether the child is able to complete the sentences as per the age or the child answers in single words or single phrase. How's their motor skills? Eye contact, correct. How's their motor skills? That defines their uh, neurological growth. How's their behavior with the team, other people? That defines their social and psychological growth. Now this autism is not disease. Don't treat it like, oh my God, someone has autism, they are going to die. This autistic child, they will become adult. And there is a plan for them. You have to help these kids, you have to help these parents. So there are two aspects. <coughs> Number one, stop treating them like, hey, this is an autistic child. If at home you label this child, this child will behave differently. This child will behave erratic. This child will do some antisocial behavior and blame it on autism. Right? They, because there is an escape mechanism. That label is escape. Number two, that you need to assimilate this child into society. So you need to tell the parents that there are these are the 31 things out of these things, which are the things you select. So you have a group get together for friends with your child, either in your apartment or school uh, children. You invite for the party and educate these children how to assimilate this child. So there are 31 things a parent will tell to the friends of autistic child. So these 31 things are mentioned. What is the page number of this? Someone can you help me? 30 things. 30 ways. What is the page number? Depending on which edition book you are issued, 191, 193, 175. Okay, so there are different editions you are issued. So the page number, this page, 30 ways. <laughs> the edition which I have, it has 191. So the 30 ways you will tell to the parent, train the parent. This parent will educate other children so that this child is assimilated with them. It is very important. 
you don't want your child to be called autistic you don't want you to call your child autistic you don't want this label because the child will not be able to grow the child will also ha always have anti social behavior and the child will blame the failure blame the anti social behavior on one label autism you don't want that okay and if you call your child autistic other children will find it difficult to make friends the parents of other children will say that hey this is psycho child huh? you stay away from that the other parents they are not going to call your child autistic they are going to child call your child psycho this boy is psycho stay away from this boy very harmful yeah. schooling trupti very good question now in the school if a teacher diagnoses your child so you have to confront the teacher tell me which test you are using what is the statistical significance of this test what is the alpha value and what is the beta value how confirm is your test that you say that this test diagnoses autism and you have been able to diagnose show me what is your qualification that you call my child autistic you have to make sure <coughs> no one labels your child now imagine a scenario your child scores less in the exam and teacher calls dumb writes on the book of the child your child is dumb child will you like that so that is a abuse that is abuse you word if you don't like that how you are accepting someone calling your child autistic never accept that you have to fight it right so madam whatever is your qualification you don't have authority to call the child autistic tell me the test you are use if you are read 10 symptoms from a book and four symptoms you find in the child and you call autism today after discussing with you i have found three symptoms of schizophrenia in you ma'am shall i call you schizophrenia patient i can give you certificate right now yeah confirm to that special educator does not have legal authority to call a child autism tell her that according to which law who is authorizing you to diagnose the child bring that certificate to me you can always challenge this you can ask her which is the test you are use show me the results of the test i want the analysis of the test right you can talk to the principal you can talk to your lawyer now there are some scenarios the school will use a play game so the child is not good in one subject so school doesn't want this child to go into 8th standard 9th standard 10th standard because that will affect the overall percentage of the high scorers in the school so they they will accept what they will do they will tell you that your child has this learning disability so ask what is the sub, what is the test you have used to call the child has learning disability in this particular subject if the child is weak what do you think what can be the reasons everyone write down what can be the reason that the child is weak in particular subject lack of interest very common dislike the teacher teacher is not good teacher has schizophrenia or hopeless teacher teacher is not teaching good concept not clear basics not clear missed some classes right too much pressure aptitude not there the child doesn't like this but that doesn't mean fear of learning all those pressure expectations all those things the or efforts not put simple is efforts not put by the child or the parents needs more help does not like the school <laughs> does not like the teacher does not like teaching method so learning disability should be the last right so don't label a child that the child has learning disability because the child is scoring less sometimes some parents come to us and they say sir can you give the certificate of learning disability for this subject so i say them very frankly i do not have a test which is scientifically proven which is statistically significant to prove that your child has learning disability particular subject so the parents argue that our school teacher or school special educator has done the diagnosis i always ask them politely please bring me the statistical test which they have used and the analysis of that test 
just because your child has scored less marks, don't fall for this learning disability. Because maybe your child can with more help, okay, special some edu some tuition or your special attention at home, extra studies at home, child can grow in this subject. <laughs> child needs extra focus. If the child can become engineer, child can become superstar, child can, child can become MBA, CA, that dream will be gone if you accept this learning disability. Right? Don't fall for this diagnosis. This is not a diagnosis. This is a man-made thing to remove your child from that. Okay? So there is nothing called learning disability. There is a thing called teaching disability. So the teacher is not good. Teacher cannot teach, right? So you give the diagnosis on the paper to the teacher, write the name of the teacher. Then you draw a triangle and give a paper to the teacher from today onwards, your diagnosis is teaching disability for this subject. Okay, teacher, you resign from the job. Then I change the class uh, subject for my child. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Any question? Anyone has undergone? Okay, how many of you as a parent has undergone with the diagnosis? Either the school played this game or teacher played this game or special educator was dumb enough to diagnose your child. Autism, learning disability, ADSD, depression. Yeah. So if you are gone, you can write what was the diagnosis someone has given. What was the diagnosis? So you ask them, what is the test they have used? What is the alpha value of the test? What is the beta value of the test? And what is the uh, interpretation of the test, analysis of the test? I want that questionnaire. <coughs> then you also take, give the test uh, result verbal diagnosis of the, this thing, right? So there are two students. I will tell you one interesting story. Okay, focus now, stop writing. Yeah, you are a very sincere student and you are having a lot of cold in your area. Okay, good. You are covered up completely. So there are two students. Both have ADSD. Okay. One parents are over cautious. They are like, oh my God, my child has ADSD and they treat it like a disease. They go from one counselor to other, jump, keep jumping. There is no treatment for ADSD. They sometimes start the medicine, they create a depression to the child or because of the label of ADHD, the child always has anxiety, child is behaving erratic, antisocial and blaming it on ADHD. Okay. The child does not grow. There is another child has ADHD, does not know the diagnosis. The parents also does not know the, do not know the diagnosis. The teachers also do not know the diagnosis. The teachers cry. They come to school. So every year one teacher will cry. Okay, I cannot teach this class. There is a one student who is running in the class. And if I am uh, explaining a poem, this child is enacting the poem. Seriously, what is this? Yeah, and it continued to happen from third standard, fourth standard, fifth standard, 11th, 12th, MBBS, PG. Every year there was one teacher who used to cry, literally cry and leave the class. Okay, and this student, did not know there is something called ADSD. The parents did not know there is something called ADSD. The uh, teachers did not know there is something called ADSD, right? What do you think which child will grow in life? Yeah, if you treat ADSD or if you ignore ADSD, which child will grow? Yeah, so ignorance is bliss. So why don't you ignore it? Yeah, so <coughs> naughty child, Mischievous child, no problem. You call anything, right? So this child was crazy. So as the child got matured and when the teachers used to go out of the class crying, so the child used to stay. Mom, at least take the attendance before you go. And then all other girls are like, hey, what are you saying, stupid? She is crying because of you and you are saying, ma'am, take the attendance? What stupid? 
and then girls used to go and apologize to apologize to the teacher and say ma'am please sorry that he is a psycho only he doesn't know he has adhd ma'am please come to the class and then next time the ma'am comes to the class and um, then exam comes okay and after the exam uh, ma'am is very sincere actually though she has cried then she sees that oh, how is this possible this mischievous this psycho this adhd boy he is the topper in the class how is this possible yeah so because the topper because he does not know that he has adhd yeah. so it's better it's better to have that and that child was me actually so when you have adhd the what is there are three problems okay one is you cannot pay attention to one thing so you are doing multitasking and adhd comes with its anxiety and depression phase so you need to do two things number one you need to stop multitasking <laughs> So you need to do multitasking. Sorry. <laughs> I was checking whether you are paying attention. So that is also ADSD. Yeah? So you need to stop doing multitasking, ADSD people. And second is you need to manage your anxiety, stress and depression that comes with ADSD. Okay. If you are able to do these things, then you can overcome the problems. So the ADSB is not a disease. You cannot out or uh, read it, get rid of it. You need to learn to leave it. So the problem is someone has ADSB, their outcome, their functional role in the society, a student's functional role is to study and score good marks, to secure good rank in the good college, right? Then once you start earning, important is to earn. When you are doing a job, it is important to stay in one job, not leave that job because you have ADSB. So, so someone who has ADSD, they have dysfunction. So if you are able to manage your dysfunction, you can lead good life. You can succeed. So to succeed, to overcome the ADSD, you need to do two things. One is you learn certain techniques to increase your emotional bank balance, learn certain techniques to reduce your anxiety, stress and depression. And do less. You avoid multitasking. So I'm forcing my mind to not touch my mobile and not read the book while talking and not drink the coffee while talking. So this is multitasking. I will give another example. We come to the another case study. How many of you feel that you have ADSD? After you have read the book, after reading the book, you feel that you have ADSD. It's okay. You can self-label yourself. Don't worry. Or you feel your child has ADSD. Some traits are there. Okay. Not ADSD, but OCD. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, husbands, they always have narcissist and schizophrenia. They don't have good diagnosis like ADSD. Yeah. So depression, ADSD, OCD, they are in you. Schizophrenia, narcissist personality, bipolar, maniac. They happen on poor husbands. Maybe borderline. It's nothing wrong. If you have ADSD, it's okay, absolutely okay. Okay, you can still survive. Now I will ask another question. There is a man around. Hey, why man only is a victim? Why not woman? Huh. There is a woman this time. And 35 years of age. She comes to you for a job. And you see in her resume, six months, eight months, four months. And between these two jobs, always have a break. Again, six months, one year, two year. Leaving the job before getting another job. That is what stupid are you? And not having an income during this phase. Then taking time to find another job, failing multiple interviews. Then finding another job thinking that this is a calling. Okay, you ask why there is so much gap, they will always give reason. Someone died, that is a common reason. Okay. Then they will like, uh, I do not like that company. Uh -huh. 
that company did not suit me i did not suit them i did not like the manager i did not like the culture all those stupid excuse they will give okay actually the problem is them yeah family problems then health problem you ask hey, what was the health diagnosis so i'm like hey, give me that certificate what was your health diagnosis there was one girl <coughs> who said father was ill i said okay give me that paper which shows your father was ill i will hire you right now then she called one friend she went outside she called one friend and she brought one mri report i was like yeah she is truthful yeah and by mistake i read the name on this mri report and that surname was different than this girl yeah yeah and then i asked uh, are you married she said no what is your father's name uh she saw whatsapp okay <laughs> and she read her father's name from the report i said both you are surname difference she gave some story she had a back story for that also very intelligent that was very intelligent girl she had a back story for why her father has a different surname so i was really impressed with that and then i did the diagnosis she has autism okay <clears throat> so now someone who has this condition what do you do you think is a diagnosis now it can be bipolar disorder because when they have manic episode they take impulsive judge, impulsive decisions number one so don't jump for the diagnosis always go for differential diagnosis okay so one can be bipolar disorder second can be adhd third can be autism fourth can be antisocial behavior psychopaths they do something bad in every company with everyone they go then they are fired or they leave the job when they are caught correct now start from uh, this bipolar disorder right so you have to think of differential diagnosis and then start from each diagnosis bipolar disorder only this thing does not prove you ask more history do you have binge shopping episodes you ask the relatives does this person take a risk how is the behavior how is your mood tell me about your month so a bipolar disorder will always say four month four days <coughs> hyperactive impulsive risk taker and two weeks depression or they will say two weeks depression four five days or one week good feeling so you know what is a diagnosis then second comes adhd so you can ask them more history you read from this adhd chapter what are the other things they cannot focus they are hyperactive they are jumping from one activity to another they have their bouts of anxiety stress and depression then autism in autism you will look for neurological growth psychological growth social growth and physical growth autism spectrum disorder majorly relies on social abnormality social behavior unable to make friends fighting at the workplace fighting during games giving answers in the one word not sticking to the commitment changing jobs if you see most of the people those who have intermittent job histories they are switching jobs they are leaving the job without they get second job most likely diagnosis will be autism then followed by psychopaths right anti social behavior everywhere they go they do some anti social behavior they betray people they fight they steal they do something wrong non compliance and they get fired right <laughs> they think they are not born to work delirium of grandiosity so delirium is one of the feature of what is the diagnosis if you have delirium hallucination psychosis what does it look for what are you looking for what is your diagnosis most likely schizophrenia there is one question you are going to ask for a schizophrenia patient how do you diagnose so you ask the relatives is this person normal or abnormal the relatives will say completely hopeless abnormal gone case mad psycho schizophrenic okay 
you ask the client you ask the patient hey how are you what do you think about yourself so the client will say i am good everyone else is psycho so that is a diagnosis of schizophrenia schizophrenia people they feel that they are normal so they deny if you get a client someone says that i have these symptoms i do these things so the diagnosis is cannot be schizophrenia but someone says that i am normal and they have this delirium hallucination <laughs> psychotic episodes more likely is schizophrenia okay you read the book more correct question please ask some questions so are you understanding how you are approaching right so don't read the chapter okay and apply as soon as you read adhd you say that you have adhd a hey, wrong diagnosis here okay as soon as you read schizophrenia you say husband has schizophrenia a hey, wrong diagnosis okay as soon as you read narcissist personality you call your one of your relative narcissist person right don't do that so you have to think of differential diagnosis okay always have four five diagnosis for the condition then rule out why not this why not this you like this if you like differential diagnosis approach suchitra has asked a very difficult question can a person with bipolar disorder during a manic episode she has written in the bracket so be very narcissistic and grandiose and suffer from psychosis and imagine things means hallucinations which are closer to schizophrenia now two th this is can overlap a person can have schizophrenia person can have bipolar disorder also saranya has asked the most difficult question how to reduce uh, mobile addiction in children okay it's like what question you are asking right so very difficult <laughs> for mobile addiction first we need to reduce our own mobile addiction number 2 you give them dedicated one mobile in that mobile you tell them the rules no facebook no instagram no tiktok tiktok nothing you can watch from this time to this time and take youtube premium subscription why when you take youtube premium subscription the advertising is gone when there is advertising the child may click on the link and go to new pages new things new games new links might get addicted to porn and anime and all those things you don't want that right so always remember youtube premium is a very good subscription and there is a family plan dedicated mobile with the child is always a good idea but you have to monitor 